So let's get you set up with a Minecraft server running on Ubuntu Linux. Now my recommendation for a VPS server would be to have at least two gigabytes of RAM and two CPU cores available. And that's why I'm going to be choosing the VPS M and that should be able to run the server okay with about three to four people. When you know which server you're gonna use, the next thing we'll need to do is actually get logged into the server via SSH. Now, if it's on a Fauso server, you do this by going to the control panel, finding the login details for your server, as long as it's a fairly new server, and then pasting these details into an SSH client. I'm going to use the client Putty because that's a very easy client to use and it does everything we need to do here. To download Putty, all you need to do is go to some form of web browser and then search for Putty. Once you've done that, look for the link that's at putty.org, click on that link and then download the top version of Putty that's available there. Once it's downloaded, you can just open it in the programs menu and then from there, we simply just log into our server. If you have a new FASO server, then your server access details will be available in the control panel, in the VPS section or whatever kind of server you've got. And then on the right hand side, you will see your server access details. If it's an older server, those details might not be visible there, but hopefully you've noted those down somewhere before they expired. If you're using another server provider and you don't know the details to log into your server, you'll need to contact them and get their assistance for getting those details. Now the host name is the IP address of the server, which again on the Faustus control panel is available right here. And hopefully if you're using an external server provider, they either show that or they can tell you what that is. And then you'll need the server access details. The username typically is root, and it is in this case, and the password is whatever was set when the server was created, or if you changed it, whatever that's been changed to. In order to paste inside your SSH terminal, all you need to do is copy whatever it is you're gonna paste, as you would normally do on Windows, and then right click to paste. Whenever you're either typing in or pasting in a password in a Linux terminal, it's not gonna show up, and that's just how Linux works, so don't worry, the password is there. Hit enter and now you should be logged into your server. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the server is fully up to date. To do that, we're gonna run the command apt update. And when that runs, that's gonna check against the archives and repositories and make sure that any updates that are available are queued up and ready to go. And then we're gonna run the command apt upgrade. And that's gonna run all of those updates for us. Once we've left that to finish, the next thing we want to do is install Java. Java is what Minecraft runs through. It's its base programming. So in order to get this running, we need to make sure that we have the correct version of Java installed. To do that, we're going to run the command apt install openjdk-17-jre-headless. Now I'm going to put that command in the description. So all you'll need to do is copy and paste that command in, but you just need to have that in in some way and then hit enter and it will then start to install Java for you. You may need to hit Y at some point in the installation to confirm that you do want to do this. The next thing that we'll want to do whilst logged in as root is make sure that the internal network is set up correctly and we're not going to get blocked by any firewalls on the server. Now, if you're using a FASO server, you won't need to worry about the internal firewalls by default because they're actually all managed externally. And then you can enable IP tables as you need whilst you're using your server. If you are using another server provider, then they may be using either UFW or IP tables. If they are using UFW, then the command that you need to run is simply UFW allow and then 25565. That will open 25565, which is the port that Minecraft uses by default. If you are using IP tables, then I've pasted the command in the description and it's shown visually on screen right now for you to use as well. And this is the full command that you'll need to open that port. There's one last thing we need to do whilst we're logged in as root, and that is install the software screen. We're gonna be using this a bit later, but we need to get it installed now whilst we're logged in as root. To do that, all you need to do is type in the command apt install screen. Once that's done, that's all you need to do. Now onto the next step. It's now time to create a new user to actually run Minecraft through. We don't want to run Minecraft in the root user because that can introduce some security issues. And it's much better practice to actually run any application through a separate user. So in this case, we're gonna make the user MC admin. And to do that, we're gonna run the command add user and then follow that with the name of the user that we want to add. 
Now, I said I'm going to call mine MC Admin. You don't have to do that. You can call it anything you want as long as it makes sense and is something that you're going to remember. So put in the command add user followed by the name that you want and then hit enter. It's then going to show you that it's added a user and it's going to ask for a password. Again, make that something memorable or make sure you note it down somewhere in a key pass or something like that. And then once you've done that, it's going to ask you for more information like full name, room number. None of that is necessary. You don't have to put any of that information. And I typically just hit enter until I get the prompt. Is this information correct? And then I hit Y and then we're done. Now that we've created a new user, everything we want to do from now on, we realistically should be in that new user. We should be logged in as them. So to do that, we're going to run the command SU space and then the name of your user, which in this case is MC admin. Now that we're logged in as the new user, we want to make sure that we're actually in the home directory for this user. So to do that, what we're going to do is type in the command cd slash home and then slash then your new username, which in my case is MC admin. Once we're in our home directory, it's time to start installing the Minecraft files. Just before we do that, what I'd recommend you do is make a new directory for your Minecraft server files to live in. So the way to do that is to run the command mkdir, which is make directory, followed by the name of a directory, which I would suggest you call Minecraft server or something similar. Next, we want to navigate into that directory, which we do by entering the command cd, followed by the name of the directory. Now that we're here, it's time to install the Minecraft server files. On the computer that you're using to access your server, open a web browser and search for Minecraft server files. The top link shown should be from minecraft.net and that's the link you want. Click on that and then inside that page, you should see a download link for Minecraft server and then whatever version that is. In my case, that's Minecraft server 1.20.2. So what I do here is I right click that link and then I click copy link address. Once I've copied that link, I then go back into my SSH terminal, my putty session, and I type in the command wget, then a space, and then right click to paste in the link that you just got from the Minecraft website. Hit enter, and that's now going to try and download the server files from the link that you've just put into the terminal. Once that's done, you should end up with a server.jar file inside that Minecraft directory. So actually check that, what you can do is run the command ls, and that will list what is actually in the directory that you're currently in. It's very useful to do this fairly regularly so you have an idea of what you're doing to your files, what's there, where you actually are. Now what we want to do is run that file. To do that, go back to the Minecraft server page and copy the Java command that's written just below the Minecraft server link. Come back into your SSH terminal and then right click to paste the command. Now before we go ahead and run the command, it's going to be worth actually looking at it to see what it's doing. So this is a Java command. And what it's doing here is it's starting the Minecraft server.jar file with a range of parameters. XMX and XMS is referring to the RAM that's actually available for the server. We'll go into a bit more detail on that in a second. Underscore server, et cetera, et cetera. That's the server file name. Now, obviously on our server, it's just called server.jar. So what I'd recommend you do is just change the name in this command to just say server.jar rather than Minecraft underscore server. Where it says no GUI, that means there's going to be no graphical interface, which we don't need because we're running this in command line, so that's fine. So the other thing that we might want to change here is this XMX and XMS area. XMX refers to the maximum amount of RAM that the Minecraft server can actually use. And XMS refers to the initial heat pile that's available. Now for modded servers, that's a bit more important. For vanilla servers, you're usually fine leaving XMS as it is. XMX, however, I would try and put that up as high as you can. If you're on a two gigabyte server, then you can try and put this up to two gigabytes. And no, you don't have to work out the maths and double that number. You can simply replace the 1024M with 2G, and that will indicate two gigs of RAM. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you just have a two gigabyte server, then that is all of the resources that your server has available. So it may not be able to hit that full two gig. It may cause slowdown in other areas, and it definitely will slow down any other applications that are running. So it's worth keeping that in mind. If you need to run at the full two gig all the time, then maybe a two gigabyte server isn't enough. But what I'd also recommend is run the server, 
test it out with some friends, see what you can and can't do, see when you start hitting your limits, and then change these values from there. Once you've made any changes you want to make here, then press enter to run the command. That should then try and generate the Minecraft server, but inevitably it's going to fail. And the reason for that is we haven't accepted the EULA agreement, which hasn't been generated yet. Once we've ran the server file and it fails, if you then type in the command ls, you should now see that we have more than just the server.jar file. We've now got a range of other files, including the EULA.txt. To open that, type in nano space and then the text file name. When that opens, you'll then see the contents of that file. You can navigate around in nano using the arrow keys. And what we want to do is go down to where it says false, remove that with the backspace key, and then type in the word true. To save our changes, we're just going to hit control O. That's then going to write over the changes and we want to accept that we're overwriting the file. And then when that's done, hit control X to close. We're now going to try and run that Minecraft server file again. And rather than writing out the same command again that we did already, what we can do instead is hit the up arrow key on your keyboard. And then that will eventually show the original command that we ran with the Java space dash XMX, etc. That's the command we need. So you'll just be able to hit enter and that should now run the server file. Now that we've agreed to the EULA agreement, the server file should run correctly and it should generate a new world for us. We'll know that it's all working correctly when the final prompt indicates that the server is running. And if it is, what we then want to do is type in the word stop. That will stop the server whilst we make some very final changes to make sure that the server is accessible. The next thing I'd recommend you do is take a look at the server.properties file. To do that, what we can do is run the command nano, then followed by server.properties. If you've ever ran a Minecraft server before, even on Windows, then this file will look pretty familiar to you. This is where you make changes to the overall way that the server works, whether that's the actual game mode you're running, whether that's the amount of people that can join, whether there's a whitelist enabled, all of these changes can be made here. So I'd recommend you take the time to go through each of the options and see what you actually want from your Minecraft server. In the same way that we made the change on the EULA text document, all we need to do here is use the arrow keys, navigate to the bits we want to change, and then type in the changes we want. When you've made all the changes you want to, then hit Control O again, and then Control X to close. So there's one last thing that we need to do on the server, and technically it's optional, but I'd argue it's probably the reason why you'd even want to have a Minecraft server in the first place. And that's enabling screen sessions so that your server can run without you having this SSH terminal open. And this is why we installed the screen software earlier. And now we're going to use it. Start by typing in the command screen, and then it'll open a page that shows the licensing agreements for the software. If you see that, then great, we're already halfway there. So when you hit enter, that's now going to put you into a new screen session. Anything that you do in this session is technically separate to your other session, the one that you're logged into via PuTTY. And that means that you can close the PuTTY session without impacting anything happening here in this screen session. If you want to navigate back to your original session, you can do so by hitting Control A, then D, and that will detach the session. And then to get back into your original session, you put in the command screen space dash R. So let's get back into our screen session and make sure we're in there and not the original. And then we're gonna start the Minecraft server again inside this screen session. Copy that same Java command from the Minecraft server website again, paste it into your session, rename the server as you normally have to do. So either name it server.jar or rename your server file if you need to, and then click enter. From here, the server is now going to run in the screen session. And when it's up and running, if you were then to hit control A D, that then detaches the session. And it means that when you close your terminal, your Minecraft server will stay online, which is exactly what we want. So now that we've done all that, there's one final thing that you need to do if you're a fast host customer, or if you are using a service provider that has an external firewall, and that is add the port to the external firewall so that anyone can connect to your server. So I'm obviously going to show you on the fast host control panel how to do this. And so all you need to do is log into your fast host control panel, navigate to the virtual private servers area on the left hand side, or if you've got a dedicated server, navigate there. 
select the server in question. And then once that page is opened, click on the firewall tab at the top of the screen. And you'll see what policy your server is currently using. You can then select that policy by clicking the link. And from here, you can amend the rules on your server. Now, Minecraft ports aren't exactly a common rule that we normally deal with, but you can simply go to advanced rules and then click add rule on the right hand side of the screen. Enter in a name that makes sense, so Minecraft, something like that. Select TCP as the protocol, and then in the port section that appears, select that and scroll right down to other. That will then let you enter in your own port and enter in the number 25565. And then click add firewall rule. And that's it. We've now fully set up everything that we need to run our Minecraft server. If you left the Minecraft server running in a screen session, then once the firewall has properly updated, you should just be able to open up Minecraft and connect to your new server. If you didn't leave your server running, quickly go back to your SSH terminal, open up a screen session, run the Minecraft command again, and let your server run. Once it's up, it's time to test it and see if we can connect. So I've just booted up Minecraft, I've gone into the multiplayer tab, and I'm just adding the server that I've just made. So call it whatever makes sense to you, then add in the IP address of your server, and then click add. It should just show up right there, it should show the green bar showing good ping, and it should show there's no one on the server right now. If it shows that, then great, click on it and try and connect. And with any luck, you should just be straight into your new server. As with any other Minecraft server, all your friends should need is just the IP address and they should also be able to connect. And as you can see, the server's running absolutely fine. I'm not getting any lag or anything. Obviously, the more people that you have on the server, the more likely it is that you might encounter some issues depending on what specs are required. And if you add mods to your server, that also is going to change what is the minimum spec for a Minecraft server. But if you're just having three to four people, having a two gigabyte server is normally enough. Well, here we are. Everything's done, you've now got a working server and hopefully all your friends are able to connect as well. I really hope you found this video useful and of course if there's any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and either myself or one of our friendly commenters I'm sure will be able to help you. Bye for now and happy gaming.